I wish I could sing properly. I mean, really properly. I know I can sing improperly. I get in the car, I get out a CD, I turn the volume up and I sing away. This is one of my favourites at the moment, Handel's Messiah. And you know that first aria? Comfort ye, the tenor sings. Comfort ye, bring comfort to my people. I love it. I don't sing it in tune, but I love it. And then the first part of the Messiah draws to a close with a beautiful duet. The soprano sings words that are so needed and important for us now. She sings, well, let's hear the words read for us now. Jesus said, come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, Handel wrote very few duets in the Oratorio Messiah. There's one at the end and this one at the beginning starts with the alto singing he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Comes from Isaiah chapter 40. The alto sings that and then the soprano replies with those beautiful words, come to me all you who travailed and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. There's a movement from Old Testament to New Testament from the alto who promises what God will do to the soprano who makes it real, who gives us that experience that Jesus says, come and I will give you rest. Mark Oakley says that the Christian faith should not be lived in the indicative, but in the vocative. So our faith is not about telling, it's about beckoning. It's about God saying to us, come, come to me. Last week, I was preaching on the words from Jesus, wonderful words. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. But in this book I've been reading recently, by Mark Oakley, about George Herbert's poetry. Herbert turns that not into a statement, but into an invitation. Come my way, my truth, my life. It's a movement from the head, Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth and the life, to the heart, to where music lives, that we remember words that shape our lives, come my way, my truth, my life. And that's our mission, isn't it? To move from telling people the truth to showing them how it works, to inviting them into an experience. And of course, this beckoning is two-way. We're saying to the loving God, come to me, I am weary, come and make your home in my heart. But it's also God saying to us, come to me and I will give you rest. So that's really moving. But actually it's the second sentence in the reading we've just heard that is so powerful. It's not so well known. So did you hear it? It goes, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle 
and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Four things, quite tough, but they're realistic. Take my yoke and learn. That's the heart of it, that we need to learn how to trust. It's hard when you're in pain or angry or worried. I find it's even harder when I'm ashamed or guilty. And so I, I acknowledge that I, I know the truth of what I'm saying today, that God is saying, come be with me, sit, be still and be with me. But boy, I wish I lived it better. I know the truth, but I don't live it well. And I wonder, is that a matter of lacking integrity? Or is it rather that it's something we need to grow into? It's often said of preachers that they want to say, I commend this faith to you, but I wish I had that faith for myself as well. So if you find this sentence hard, let me tell you, so do I. But it grows, it really does. I can remember as a seven-year-old, my parents used to take us to church, but it was always Book of Common Prayer, Book of Common Prayer, the old services. And I remember hearing a sentence that went, come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden and I will refresh you. And as a seven year old, I had no idea what travail was, but I liked the sound of the sentence. Already, I think, God's truth was opening my ears and my heart. I wanted that sentence to be true. Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Martin Luther said that prayer is not about overcoming God's reluctance. It's about laying hold of God's willingness. And so here once again, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. We give thanks that in Christ you have broken down the barriers of gender, race and culture. We pray for all our fellow Christians, especially we remember those who face persecution and martyrdom for their faith. And we ask for your blessing upon our bishops, Andrew and Joe, and upon our clergy, Robert, Tom, Jonathan, Brian, and Rod, and upon our ordinand, Corin. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord of all creation, we give thanks for the nations of this world, for the rich variety manifest in the human race, we pray for all those international agencies of peace and goodwill which strive to bring conciliation where there is strife and healing where there is hate. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, King of Kings and Judge Eternal, we give thanks for our leaders in nation, national and local government. 
guide them in their decisions by your wisdom and justice. We pray for our judges and magistrates, for our police, and for all members of our emergency services. And at this time, we remember, O Lord, those whose duties on our behalf bring them into the risk of injury or infection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, promised comfort to the sorrowful and rest to the weary. We pray for the sick and the fearful, for the lonely and the bereaved. And as your word has taught us always to be mindful of the stranger within our gates, we pray for the homeless, for refugees and for all who are alienated by society. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in whose presence the saints forever sing their alleluias, we remember those known to us who have died recently and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.